Hi, I'm Britney Spear. This year, luckily, we went back to the movies, which is fantastic. So this year, we're back to doing a top 10 list of movies. The first five movies I'm gonna go through, AKA 10 through six, I'm only gonna give you a little bit of a snippet about what I thought about them. I'm really gonna go into though my top five. Basically, every movie on this list that I'm going to give you right now are worth watching, at least in my opinion. And I would definitely suggest seeing these movies at least once. I'm gonna start with an honorable mention, so technically there's 11 movies on this list, but whatever, who's counting? One of the things that really means a lot to me when I'm thinking about the movies that I like is how frequently I think that I could rewatch them. I like Don't Look Up, but I felt like I only needed to watch it once in order for it to make an impact on me, and I got the point. The rest of these movies on this list, though, however, I would definitely watch again. So let's get right into it. I'll start with number 10. No Time to Die, which was this year's installment technically last year's installment of James Bond. One of the cool things about No Time to Die is that even if you're not a hardcore James Bond fan, I do think that this movie stands well enough on its own, and I do think that it can be enjoyed by a wide audience, especially if you just have an idea of who James Bond is. Number nine on my list is Dune. Now, I went into Dune totally cold, knew it was kind of like Star Wars, and I really loved it. It was big, it felt big. I definitely think it's gonna be one of those movies that gets better as time goes on because they'll be adding more to it, but right now, just the first one comes in at number nine for me. Coming in at number eight is Ghostbusters Afterlife. I'm not a huge Ghostbusters fan, but I actually really enjoyed this movie. The kids in the movie were incredible. I mean, so much better than I thought they were going to be. It really was a darker Ghostbusters movie, and I, I dug it. I got with it. I really enjoyed it. Coming in at number seven is the story about Jonathan Larson and Tick, Tick, Boom. I mean, the thing about this movie is Andrew Garfield. I mean, Andrew Garfield is amazing. I love you, Andrew Garfield. This is my love letter to you. Number six on my quick draw picks, The Suicide Squad. I don't wanna do when The Suicide Squad came out, Oliver and I didn't really know what to expect. As everybody knows, the first one really flopped. This is supposed to be something totally different with some of the same characters. I really liked the new Suicide Squad. It's colorful, it was dirty and messy and violent. Please don't let the first Suicide Squad make you feel like you don't wanna watch The Suicide Squad. Totally different, much better. So those were just some quick takes about movies that I really liked this year, but they weren't my top five movies. Now I'm getting into my top five. Now these are movies that I feel I can rewatch at any point in time if I haven't rewatched it multiple times already. Coming in at number five is Cruella, the live action version. No. But when I saw the trailer for Cruella, I mean, I'm not gonna lie, I thought to myself, why is this necessary? Why do we need this movie? Okay, we didn't need this movie, but I'm so glad we got it because it was amazing. Emma Stone was fabulous. She looked the part, she acted the part, she dressed the part. Cruella was a movie that was really larger than life, and I really feel like Emma Stone was able to bring the character of Cruella de Vil, who maybe was a little flat in 101 Dalmatians, to life. Number four is House of Gucci. I am obsessed with Adam Driver. I am obsessed with Lady Gaga. We know this. I love her. Now, there was a lot to love about this movie, and there were a lot of things that you end up loving that I don't think were intentional, like the really bad Italian accents that everybody had. I think that that just kind of added to the flashiness and the gaudiness of the movie itself. So my number three pick is a movie that I did not expect to be on my top 10. I didn't expect it really to be in my top five, but my number three pick for the best movies of 2021 was actually Black Widow. love Scarlett Johansson and I definitely did not like Black Widow as a character in the Marvel Universe as an Avenger. She did nothing for me. I didn't like her shtick. I didn't care for it. I do feel like they took the best things about Natasha Romanoff and I feel like they made it into a movie that really showed fans like me that she is worth loving, that she is worth having her own movie. Aside from ScarJo being fabulous, the supporting cast was incredible. You had David Harbour as Red Guardian. Hilarious, loved him. Don't know anything about Red Guardian. Now I love him. You had Rachel Vise as her mother. I unfortunately do not remember her name. She was great also though. And then you had my love, my new love, Florence Pugh as Yelena.
If I could put Florence Pugh as Yelena as just like my number one in life, <laughs> I probably would. And if you watch Hawkeye, spoiler alert, she ends up showing up in the last few episodes and she is just incredible. So being able to watch Black Widow and then being able to see her in Hawkeye, I just fell in love with her as Yelena. It's funny what an actor can do to really change your mind about certain things. Florence Pugh as Yelena was able to come into two projects, Black Widow and The Hawkeye Show, with two characters that I really did not like, Black Widow and Hawkeye, and really elevate those projects to being some of my favorite things that Marvel has put out. I mean, that's an incredible turn of events if you ask me. So now I'm getting down to my top two movies and putting these at one and two almost felt a little arbitrary because I do feel like I really love both of these movies equally. But of course one had to be the winner. So coming in at number two is Bo Burnham's Inside. When you think about a comedian writing a musical dramedy, I guess you could say, that's about an hour long and talks all about being in quarantine and losing your sense of self on top of your mental health, you think, wow, that sounds really loaded and kind of sad and scary. Inside was kind of those things, but it was also, I mean, hilarious. It was endearing. It was incredibly beautiful. Not only that, but the music was Fire. I mean, I listen to that music all the time, all the time. I was literally just listening to it before we started recording because I wanted to pump myself up. And I didn't know that a song about Jeff Bezos could pump me up, but Bo Burnham was able to make that happen for me. Thank you, Bo. Everything that he did in that film, that he did himself in a room by himself, all while being quarantined, I mean, it just shows what a genius Bo really is. And if you can't appreciate that, then I really don't know what kind of movies you'll like because this was beautiful. He really laid everything out there for you. And I think that he spoke for a lot of people on how they were feeling during this time. And I really hope that him trying to destigmatize having mental health issues helps the rest of us kind of be more open about it and not keep everything inside. Hey, sorry to interrupt, especially between numbers two and one. So I'll try to keep it really quick. If you don't know me, I'm Oliver the Ricketts, uh, or if you look at the channel name, Other, if you get it, it's a whole thing. Other Productions, me, Oliver the Ricketts. That's me. I edit and produce all of these videos. Doing that for free for over 10 years. And I finally think that every video on this channel, they are better than they've ever been before and only have potential to get bigger and better, but I gotta pay a bill really fast. That's right, we've been sponsored. I truly love making videos, so any support that you can give me would definitely help. So what is the sponsor? We are an Amazon affiliate. Ooh. Basically what that means is in the description of this video and every video on the channel, there is a link to something that we talked about in the video that you can find on Amazon, whether that is a movie. In this case, it will be these 10 movies that we just talked about. In one case, an adult cow costume. Now, if you click on one of these links, you don't have to buy that thing, but if you buy anything on Amazon using our link to get there, we do get a piece of that sale from Amazon. So for instance, you could click on the link for the digital copy of Black Widow and you could buy a refrigerator and then we would get that sweet refrigerator cash. And that money will go into making better videos, better content, and uh... Paying the rent. <laughs> and paying the rent and making sure that I don't go hungry so I can continue to make great Seriously, content. if you do choose to support, uh, if you're making any of your Amazon purchases and uh, you could find it in the kindness of your heart to do it through one of our links, uh, it would mean a great deal to all of us here, and I hope to continue to bring you really great content uh, in the years to come. Thank you so much for watching. Get on back to your video. All right, here we go. The number one movie. Now, I'm going to preface this by saying I feel like I have Stockholm Syndrome. I never believed it was a thing, but... I think that that's really where we're at right now because my number one movie of 2021 was Spider-Man No Way Home. Now, if you're new here, my fiance Oliver is obsessed with Spider-Man. 
And when I say obsessed, I mean obsessed with Spider-Man. He talks about Spider-Man every day. He talked about Spider-Man every day, pretty much all day, leading up to this movie and even before that. It got to the point where on our podcast, I used to have to tell Oliver and Jeremy that they weren't allowed to talk about Spider-Man because somehow every conversation led back to Spider-Man. Spider-Man, Spider-Man, Spider-Man. Is that is that your breaking point, uh, liking or disliking something? Because, um, you know, I'm really passionate about certain certain topics like Spider-Man out there that maybe <sighs> Britney isn't so passionate about. But, you know, I, I still love Britney very much. No, I think actually the question here is, does she still love you? <laughs> However, I got to give it to them. Spider-Man No Way Home was amazing. Pun intended. When Spider-Man No Way Home came out, Oliver and I saw it three nights in a row. And that wasn't because he was dragging me. I wanted to go. I'm dying to see Spider-Man. I'm telling you, Stockholm Syndrome is real. <laughs> There's just something about this film. I wasn't in love with Tom Holland as Spider-Man. I thought Homecoming was not great. I really loved Far From Home though, but I felt like I really only loved it because of Jake Gyllenhaal. In retrospect, I can see that I actually am growing to really enjoy Tom Holland as Spider-Man. That might not mean anything to anybody. It never used to mean anything to me, but apparently it means that I love Spider-Man now. The third act of this film is just, is chef's kiss, is fantastic. Toby and Andrew being in the movie, I mean, it just elevated it. If they weren't in it, I really don't think this movie would have been as good as it was. But it's not stunt casting that made this movie great because frankly, I do not care about Tobey Maguire. I mean, I love Andrew Garfield, but I didn't care about him as Spider-Man. I hadn't even seen the Amazing Spider-Man movies. However, their chemistry with Tom and to each other and to the rest of the cast, I can't wait for this movie to be on DVD so that I can play that third act whenever I want to, just for a little serotonin boost. So those are my top 10 movies of 2021. I feel like I can rewatch almost all of these movies and still love them as much as I did the first time. If you enjoyed my list but want a different perspective, my fiance Oliver has his list. He definitely has some different picks on there than I do. And our good friend Jeremy also made his own list. And if you have a minute, go ahead and subscribe to our channel. You really want to see what we have to say about certain things, especially movies and pop culture. You want to subscribe. You want to like our videos and you want to support us. Thanks so much.